top of that, the pedal actually has two actuations on it. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over a 2020 Land Rover Discovery in the HSE Luxury Package, and I'm basically going to explain to you why this is just like a Land Rover, Range Rover, like it is absolutely insane. It's just like a mini version, basically. But as always, a huge shout out and thank you to the Land Rover slash Jaguar here in downtown Salt Lake for providing us with this Discovery. Check out them tour in the link below. Let's just get right into it. Under the hood of the Discovery, we have a three liter supercharged V6, goes through an eight speed automatic transmission, fuel economy 16 around town, and then 21 on the highway with power outputs being 335 horsepower, then 332 pound feet of torque, and a zero to 60 time of about six and a half seconds. Now, let's start off the front end by, uh, well, popping on the lights. So we do get full LED lights with the Discovery and I really like the look of the lights in general. So you get the full LEDs and then you get the LED accent lights that go down below that and press that again, that'll pop it all off. Now this one has a blacked out package and it looks absolutely fantastic. Just everything all in the front end is blacked out, including the logo at the top. And then notice that you get this little venting just down here on the side again, that's also blacked out. Parking sensors all along the front, but it looks like a Discovery, just a cooler one. Now coming around to the side here, we've got 285 millimeter tires on 22 inch rims in the front and in the rear as well. And then this does come with the air suspension. Notice how it's like super neatly tucked in because this is in the lower ride height setting, which I think that actually looks really cool in general. And they got the Black Dot Discovery badge right there on the side. You still get the body line that goes all the way through. I've noticed that a lot of the Land Rovers and Range Rovers just have that little design detail. But I'm gonna take a step back so you guys can get kind of like a full side view on the Discovery. Here's the key fob for the Discovery. You have a couple functions. You've got the unlock at the top as well as the lock. You got the light button and then this releases the tailgate, which that's what we're gonna do right now. So just hold that down and it'll pop it right open. And notice that it ha has the little like bench there at the bottom, just like what the Land Rover Range Rover has. Now coming into the rear here, notice that there is a third row. And now there's a bunch of controls for that third row right in this little area right there we'll go over that in just a moment but there's a little 12 volt just above all of that and then notice that you can raise and lower the rear with that air suspension so it makes getting in a whole lot easier first button we're going to press is this just four button and notice that everything kind of pops down with the headrest obviously that's going to help out with visibility and then all of the rows pop down all at once. So it's kind of like a shortcut if you need to load something up into the rear. Obviously you can lower down the Discovery and then you can press that and lower down all of the rows as well. We've got the rest of the switches which are gonna be the controls for the rows as well. Notice that you can just basically pull or push and that'll determine what it's gonna do. So for example, if I do the little pulling function, that is gonna pull up this one and then you got the one on the right and then I'll pull it that other one up and then you can also do the same thing for the middle now it is a 60 40 split in the middle so you notice that one side will go up and then the other side will also go up and you guys can see the split right there but yeah that is everything for that part of the rear now to close things up you just press this little button and then that will lower down and then notice that will also pop up and by the way that little kind of like seat ledge thing you can put a roughly around 500 pounds on that which is pretty neat so you could sit on it and then the next thing is i just want to show you guys what the lights look like so you got full led lights here in the back and they definitely have this cool look. They kind of wrap around. You've got all the logos in the back. Towing capacity, if you're wondering, is roughly right around 8,000 pounds. So the minimum towing capacity is 7,700 and then it goes up to 8,200 depending on all the options and the powertrain and everything that you get with the Discovery. Now coming to the back, we do have Kia Sentry for the rear. Now this is my favorite part on this particular spec because this one is all blacked out on the outside but then it has this beautiful tan interior. So you got this really nice premium leather at the top, wood trim just down below, and they got kind of like black leather to contrast all of it. And then here are the seats in the back. Obviously the headrest is popped down, but you've got this really nice perforated leather and they got kind of like the grooves in the middle and then you do have some piping and stitching all around. But just in general, I'll show you kind of like the far seats over there, just has a really nice look to it. Now let's pop into the back quickly just to see what it's like to be in the rear. Step in height, super solid, really easy to get in. Now I'm 5'11 and I've got a good amount of legroom, a little bit of storage right here and also right there. That's I've never seen that before, that's really weird. 
Anyways, in terms of headroom, I mean, super solid as well. And then notice up top right here, you get a couple of light controls. Now I've got the car on so you guys can see the rest of the controls back here. Look, I can push and I can adjust the seats. I do get heated and ventilated seats here in the back, which is pretty nice. And then you also can control the climate zone. And if you press this, it's just another little storage cubby right there. And then there is a little armrest with a couple more cup holders here in the center. But just in general, like this second row is really nice place to be in and looking over into the third row i'm not going to pop back there but just so you guys can kind of see what that all looks like really nice and solid and you get heated seats for the third row i've never seen that before but yeah you still get heated seats even back there now i do want to mention a couple more things before we leave these also control the seats so you can control them from the second row notice that there's a little button at the top right there to also lower down the seats and then you do get the little kind of like warning if you open the door and someone is driving so it's a nice little thing right there now the front does have the keyless entry as well and the mirrors do power fold in so you can see if i lock it right here the mirror is going to power fold right in and then when i put my hand in and unlock it power folds back out but the door panel here at the front looks pretty much identical to the rear in terms of like the style cues on it the only difference in controls is the window controls are up here at the top of the mirror controls. The adjustments for the seat, well, the memory seat at least, is right there. And then here are what the seats look like at the front. So again, that same kind of like design theme, it's just that the bolsters on them are going to be larger because it's the front seats. And wow, those are really nicely padded, just saying. Power adjustments are there on the side of the seat. And then there is what the pedals look like at the bottom. You got a little hood latch right there. And then this is just to open up that tailgate as well. But yeah, there's one more look before we fully pop in. We're gonna start the discovery now. So all you have to do is just put your foot on the brake, push the push start, and all the gauges will pop on. The center screen will pop on. The steering wheel will notice that it went into place. It goes up so it's easier to get into the seat. Here's the steering wheel in the Discovery. Obviously you got the Discovery logo there in the center. Really smooth leather all around the steering wheel itself. The cruise control and everything is over on that side of the steering wheel. On the other side, you've got the little control for the menu on the infotainment system, your voice command, volume control, all of that. And then you've got black stitching all around the middle of the steering wheel. So kind of all matches with that. Paddle shifters on the back to basically go through the gears yourself. And yeah, it's everything for the steering wheel. The center gauges, I just really like the look of it. And I love how you can have that little screen there in the center. So like it's showing the navigation. And then you've got RPMs over on the right side. On the left side, you've got the speed. And other than that, I mean, it's a pretty simple system to use. And if you press the menu button on the steering wheel, then it basically lets you go through different bits of information on the vehicle. I've shown this a bunch of Jaguar and Land Rover vehicles. Nothing's changed on this. It's just cool that it shows it. Now here in the center infotainment system, first off, I want to show the camera system then we'll get into the rest of the infotainment system so you've got the backup camera that is what pops up when you go into reverse and then you notice that there is a camera button on the touch screen if you press that this is the view that pops up and then if you press it again then well that's the only view oh there we go kind of gives you a little bit of a different angle with the camera now let's go over the rest of the infotainment system. So you guys know I love all the little shortcuts there at the bottom, but I did a little digging on the Discovery to see if there's anything different on this one. Android Auto Apple CarPlay, it's pretty cool. We'll get into the seats in a moment. That's another cool feature on this one. But the thing that I thought was really neat is you got the vehicle dimensions. So as you're in the different ride height settings, it tells you your dimensions. It also tells you your ground clearance, all that kind of stuff. It is in meters, but I mean, that's just so neat that it shows all that. Now. The next little party trick is the seats. Yes, you can control them, and then you can see like I can turn on the massage function if I want, but the really neat thing is I can press the individual rows and I can turn on the seats in other rows as well. And then another really neat feature you can do on top of that is you can basically lower the seats all from the touchscreen as well. So like there's just so much customized stuff you can do on the seats. So yeah, that's everything for the uh, crazy seat function. Now down here, we've got the controls for the climate system, pretty straightforward. And again, it's got the little dial. So if I press it in, I can control the seats. If I press it, I can control the climate and then if you guys are wondering what that open button does it opens this up and you've got your little kind of like cd player in that it is all lined with felt and then you just kind of close it up regularly pretty straightforward now this is kind of like the whole center console area we do have a couple cup holders right here and you can cover those with that little tab if you'd like this is the dial shifter for the eight speed automatic and it functions pretty simply so you can just put it over into each individual gear now you do have to push it in to get into the manual shift mode that's what the s stands for 
Now over here, this is our drive mode select. The drive mode select is pretty easy to use. All you have to do is just press that up and then it is gonna pop up here in the center screen when you go through the different drive modes. So you've got first your grass, gravel, and snow, and then you've got your mud ruts. Past that, you've got the sand mode, and then past that, you've got your rock crawl mode. So I mean, tons of drive modes, tons of capability with this just from like an off-road standpoint. And then over here, you've got your hill descent control, your low range. This is for that air suspension. If you don't like the auto stop start, you can turn it off. And then your stability control as well. And you got a parking brake. Now the center console is really neat. So you've got a regular center console, right? You got storage at the top, a couple of USBs and a 12 volt and it also doubles as a refrigerator to keep everything clean and notice it goes all the way back which is it's different but like i mean that's pretty cool so obviously it's really easy to load stuff up into a little mini fridge and i mean it makes sense because this is the uh discovery right get it so coming over to the glove box this part opens up but then it's kind of like spring loaded so then it just goes back and then the bottom glove box is a normal glove box so there's plenty of storage and then this is all soft touch wood trim so just really nice materials on the dash. Top here, we've got the little sunglass holder and we've got an interesting center situation. So you're gonna notice that there are, oh, I pressed it in the wrong order. There are actually two sunroofs. So you get one here at the front and then you do get one in the back as well. So all of the passengers all throughout the interior get tons of light into the cabin and yeah, that's the sunroof. Here is the window sticker on this Discovery HSE Luxury. So you guys can freeze the frame at any point if you just want to read all of these particulars on the vehicle. Now here is the base MSRP before options. Now here are a couple of the options that are added. That seven seat luxury climate package is a pretty neat option. I think it's definitely really cool. Black design package, I definitely think that's worth the money. It's only 600 bucks, makes the car look really neat. Those 22s, wow, that is pretty expensive for some rims, but they do look really good. But after all of the options, here is the total MSRP, 77,360. Let's take this Discovery out and see how she drives. Let's talk about visibility here in the Discovery HSC Luxury before we set off. So visibility over the hood, it's actually really easy to see out of and that's really important, especially when you're off-roading and all that kind of stuff. And this is actually really nice up here. There's your visibility through both of the mirrors. Remember, it does have the blind spot monitoring. There is your other mirror. And then here is all throughout the rear, which you notice the seats do get in the way. But again, remember that from the infotainment system, you can lower down the headrests or the whole seats themselves. Really easy to do that. And so then obviously you can kind of help out with the visibility in the back. And let's set off. We are setting off here in the Discovery HSE Luxury. And if you guys remember, I reviewed a Discovery Trek, which is actually sitting right over there. And that was kind of like this vehicle, but then like all souped up crazy, like off-road. This is kind of like the uh, normal version, but I still wouldn't consider it like a normal vehicle just because it's so capable on the off-road and it just has all these crazy luxury features. And again, this just is kind of like a baby Range Rover. And if you guys don't know what I mean, like I'm talking about like the fully like decked out, like the Land Rover Range Rover, the big Mac Daddy. That's what this really reminds me of. Like it has so many elements that are similar to it. And so I think that's really cool. And I think that that's what Land Rover was going for when they actually just created the Discovery in general. But let's get into the details on the road noise and the ride quality. So in terms of the road noise, it is really quiet. Now this is definitely quieter than that Discovery Trek that I drove and that's expected. It doesn't have all the crazy off-road stuff on it. In terms of just the ride quality though, it's it's smooth, so it's quiet, it's smooth, perfect. It does its job as a luxury SUV. We're about to get on the interstate and remember this one just basically has off-road modes. It doesn't have like a dedicated sport mode. So you kind of just keep it and you push the dial down and just let it do everything for you. And that's gonna be the best thing for the car to be able to respond to what you're trying to do. But unlike the more mild side for acceleration, Gear shifts are really quick and it's got a good amount of power. Like going uphill, I don't feel like I have, have any issues with just getting up and going. And this little kind of like sweeper is going to help us get a little bit of feel with the turning on this. Oh yeah, it handles so much better than that Trek. That Trek just had so much weight on the top of it. But this without all that added stuff, definitely a lot less body roll, definitely 
a lot just it's just surprising but we're gonna get our full-blown acceleration man it goes through those gears really quickly like it is just snappy with the gears which is really good that's exactly what you want and on top of that the pedal actually has two actuations on it <coughs> sorry excuse me the pedal has two actuations on it it has the first actuation which is just like your regular acceleration but then you can press in further with the pedal and then it has that second actuation and in that second actuation it basically just is more like throttle more throttle response basically it's like full-on acceleration so like here's me pressing the first pedal it kind of moves and then if i uh, give myself a little bit more room here and press both pedals it gears down and it goes even more so it kind of goes into a lower gear and really just gives you all of the power well let's get into summing things up and sadly we're at a bunch of red lights and train tracks and stuff so we're not gonna be going crazy fast while i'm finishing things up what I really think about this Discovery is, I think it's a really cool vehicle. So it obviously has that off-road capability. Now I know a lot of people purchasing this won't necessarily take it off-road, but the fact that it at least has the capability is really awesome. And then the other thing I really like about it is just all of the luxury features, right? You get the third row, so it has that added capability, right? If you need to throw people back there in a pinch. And then it has, you know, literally, you got heated cooled seats here. You got heated and cooled seats in the second row, heated seats in the rear. You can control the seats, all that stuff. So it's just practical and it's just really solid for like, just like a cool, practical off-road SUV. And I understand that, you know, over $70,000, it's quite a bit of money, but I feel like you're just getting so much bang for your buck and you're getting a more premium brand. The only thing that I can see against this car that like threatens this vehicle is another Land Rover and that's the Land Rover Defender. I think that once the Land Rover Defender is officially on dealer lots and people can purchase it, anyone that's looking to buy a Land Rover for off-road uses, I don't think they're gonna look at the Discovery anymore. I think they're all gonna go over to the Defender. Now, if someone needs the third row, right, then they'll for sure go to the Discovery, but I can definitely see how like, there's gonna be like a shift in sales. Like everyone that would have normally bought a Discovery is then gonna buy a Defender, cause yeah, it's just, that thing's gonna be crazy as an off-road vehicle. That is gonna sum things up on the Discovery HSE Luxury, a really cool off-road luxury SUV. But again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Land Rover Jaguar here in downtown Salt Lake for providing us with the Discovery. Check out them, turn the link below. I will see all of you in that next video.